all right everybody now we are going to start with this chapter that is air pollution we will complete <coughs> the theory of this chapter let us now start with this chapter the first things first is biosphere now what is biosphere as you can see from this particular diagram that this biosphere <coughs> is a combination of lithosphere that is earth hydrosphere that is water and atmosphere that is air where the uh, living organisms are living they are surviving they are growing in numbers so that whole spheres combined is referred as biosphere so the earth system consist of atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere and biosphere biosphere is the thing which is the life which is present in all these spheres so the biosphere is the earth's zone of life every organism belongs to the biosphere every organism if you have a life you belong to a biosphere in this chapter however our focus will be the atmosphere because air will be our focus here because we are studying air pollution the following are the zones or layers in the atmosphere and their average heights so this is a diagram which is telling you about the zones of atmosphere and their average or near to average heights not exact but an average value which you can remember and you can uh, you know <coughs> get an idea if it is like plus minus 5 10 kilometers so it is that like troposphere troposphere it is between 0 to 10 km from the sur earth surface to 10 km height stratosphere is from 10 to 30 km in some books it is like 10 to 40 mesosphere is 30 to 50 km thermosphere is 50 to 400 km and exosphere is beyond 400 km that is space exosphere is also referred as space now we will be focusing more on the troposphere part because we live we do every activity in the tropospheric region now let us talk about the height of troposphere the height of troposphere from the earth's surface varies from equator to poles so from equator to the poles the height of this troposphere varies now why does that vary now if you see this graph from equator to pole from equator towards the pole if we we'll go the height of the troposphere will change from around here it is around 16 and here when we we'll go it is around 6 or 7 this is the value when we say 10 kilometers it's like an average value it's like an average value this is not the same everywhere it varies now why in equator the height of the troposphere is more and in the poles height of the troposphere is less and the <coughs> line of demarcation the hypothetical line of demarcation between stratosphere and tr stratosphere troposphere and stratosphere is called as tropopause so what is tropopause tropopause is the imaginary line of demarcation where troposphere ends and stratosphere starts similarly we have stratopause stratosphere when the stratosphere ends and the mesosphere starts that's the stratopause similarly mesopause and thermopause so here why it is happening you have to understand it with the help of the gas equation pv is equal to nrt where what happens is volume is proportional to temperature where the temperature is high the gases expand where the temperature is high gases expand volume increases so if you have this earth okay earth diagram so when you will look at the troposphere so tropospheres gases will have more energy and more volume near the equator so this is the equator so this is the equator and this is the pole so why this it is reducing towards the pole the thickness of the troposphere is because the gases are shrinking there in their volume because the temperature is less so they occupy lesser volume so the whole atmosphere shrinks towards the poles but in the equator the atmosphere expands the gases expand because the temperature is relatively higher and that is why because of that the height of the troposphere varies from equator to poles the next is the part number 1 that is the pollutants and their impacts the pollutants and their impacts this is the first part 
we have divided this chapter into various parts this is the first part pollutants and their impacts we will discuss about it various types of pollutants and their impacts here then we will be coming to the part number two after this all this is over the part number two will be this part actually the air quality index uh, the here part number two is not written please write here it's a very small part the part number two is this one part two then part number three is your dispersion of air pollutants is a conceptual part and uh, then we will be discussing after all this then the controlling of air pollution how do we control or take care of the air pollution caused by various uh, instruments with the help of various arrangements we can control that air pollution okay and the lastly this impact of wind on dispersion of pollutant effective stack height and minimum stack height so all this will be there there used to be a topic also we used to study that was a plume behavior now we don't uh, study that uh, because it was specifically written in the previous year's uh, 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 this is syllabus that this is in the syllabus but nowadays it is omitted from that and in the past five years or so we are we have been observing that there are no questions from that plume behavior so you can just remember if if at all you find any pyq based on the plumes like uh, looping plume fanning plume in winter condition which type of plume is formed plume is that uh, chimney generates that uh, gas and it, the behavior of that the shape of that so nowadays it is not mentioned clearly in the syllabus previously it used to be mentioned so therefore and we, we have we are also seeing the trend that they are not asking in the gate and esc prelims examination regarding this that is why maybe they have omitted from the syllabus but still we have to be prepared if at all in any state examination something comes up so we can memorize it but no need to go into detail of something like that okay all right so continuing with this the part one pollutants and their impacts presence of one or more air contaminants in such concentration and for such duration that it starts affecting the life in the biosphere so whenever something is present in excess it harms and if something is present in such concentration and for such duration in air that is called as air pollution pollutants are broadly classified into two categories primary pollutant and secondary pollutant primary pollutant my dear are those which are directly produced from an identifiable source primary pollutant we know that from this point primary pollutant is coming let us uh, control the point of pollution but secondary pollutants are those for which we don't know the exact source because secondary pollutants are formed due to the reactions and so many pollutants will react together and they will form a new pollutant that will be a secondary pollutant so we exactly don't know from where it is coming so primary pollutants have directly identifiable origin whereas one or more primary air pollutants react under favorable conditions it leads to the formation of secondary pollutant so remember these primary and secondary pollutants these are the most common primary and secondary pollutants and this is a very beautiful diagram which you should mark it as important because this diagram has to be remembered by you primary pollutant examples are oxides of sulfur oxides of carbon oxides of nitrogen lead hydrocarbon particulate matter etc we'll we'll study about all of them now secondary pollutants are like sulfuric acid is there ozone is there formaldehyde is there peroxyacetyl nitrate or pan is there now this diagram is telling you clearly what all are primary and what all are secondary if you see this diagram these are the primary these are the primary pollutants carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide ammonia volatile organic compound voc particulates that is particulate matter pm nitrogen dioxide nitric oxide all these are primary secondary you can see sulfur trioxide so3 sulfuric acid hydrogen peroxide particulate matter ozone particulate matter are in both they are primary also they are secondary also ammonium nitric acid all these are secondary pollutants okay now there is an important point here note that out of all the oxides of nitrogen there are many oxides of nitrogen we have oxides such as n2o n2o5 like these kind of oxides are there and other oxides are also there but out of various oxides of nitrogen 
only NO and NO2 are classified as pollutants. NO3, N2O, N2O3, N2O5, they are not classified as pollutants. So, this is nitric oxide, uh, nitric oxide and this is nitrogen dioxide nitrogen dioxide. So, you should remember this is also a question in many exams that which one of the following combination of nitrogen oxides is a pollutant. So, you should know the names also nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. Okay, Right. Next, we will come to the ideal gas law. The gases when behaving ideally, they follow this law PV is equal to N into R into T where P is the pressure in Pascals or Newton per meter square also you can say that is Pascal, volume in meter cube, N is the number of moles of the gas, R is the universal gas constant which is 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin and the temperature T in Kelvin. You have to match up with the units. Like if you are putting pressure in Newton per meter square, this volume is in meter cube, N that is number of moles, number of moles are 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin, this is the mole, okay, multiplied by Kelvin. So, you can see Kelvin, Kelvin getting cancelled, n, n, number of moles, number of moles getting cancelled and this is becoming Newton per meter uh, square multiplied by meter cube is Newton meter. So, this is Newton meter, finally it is Newton meter equal to Joule and that is what is Joule. What is Joule? Newton meter, right, work done, force into displacement, that is Joule. So, you have to match up with the units while applying this equation. All gases at STP that is standard temperature and pressure that is 0 degree Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin, 0 degree Celsius is nothing but 273.15 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere occupy 22.4 liter per mole. It occupies how much? 22.4 liter per mole that is R is equal to this definitely 8.314 joule per mole Kelvin, but R is also equal to if you convert the units, it will be 0 0.08082, 082057 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. It is like this. Using this value, you will get it easily because everything, the units will get cancelled. You can use the pressure in pass, uh, in atmosphere then. Then PV is equal to NRT would be pressure is 1 atmosphere, volume we do not know and uh, it will be equal to N that is the number of moles divided by 0 0.082057. This unit is liter atmosphere per mole per Kelvin. Everything should get cancelled, right? And only liter per mole should remain because here it is liter per mole. And this is what will be helpful in converting that multiplied by uh, 273.15 Kelvin. So, when you will find this out V by N value, you will get in liter per mole because atmosphere, atmosphere will get cancelled, Kelvin, Kelvin will get cancelled. That is why R value of this value should be considered. So, 0 0.082057 into 273.15. This value comes out to be 22.4 liters per mole and that is why my dear we say that if you have any gas at STP that is uh, um, standard temperature and pressure it will occupy 22.4 liter per mole. Okay? Now there is this one formula the concentration of suspended particles and gaseous pollutants are usually expressed in microgram per meter cube at prevalent atmospheric temperature and pressure. Next, let us come to the various types of uh, uh, this pollutions like uh, different types of pollutants. The first one amongst them is suspended particulate matter or SPM or particulate matter PM. So, what happens is this what is particulate matter? Particulate matters are the ones which we usually see in our surroundings, uh, we feel in our surroundings, we do not see them, we generally feel them in our surroundings that okay, uh, some breathing issues is happening, you can feel some particles present in the terms of like uh, some haziness is there in the atmosphere, so particulate matters are present. Maybe you can feel the dust, 
okay somewhere or the other you can feel it while breathing so this is something and sometimes it is not even felt because they are so fine in nature so they are represented as pm and there is also a suffix to them like for example pm10 like pm2.5 what do you mean by that pm10 means all those particles having size less than 10 micron pm2.5 means all those particles having size less than 2.5 micron pm1 means all those particles having size less than 1 micron and pm0.1 means all those particles having size less than 0.1 micron now you should know these things these are very important diagram this one what happens about pm10 pm10 generally is in our respiratory tract in the nose and in the respiratory tract it does not it does not enter the lungs but pm 2.5 that means the particles less than 2.5 micron enter the lungs but not completely but partially they block the lungs pm 1 get thoroughly dispersed in the lungs because they are further smaller and pm 0.1 get dispersed into the blood streams because they pass from the lungs into the bloods also blood also so particulates are the small particles either liquids or solids yes never ever think that particulate matter is always solid only no particulate matter can be a very very fine liquid state matter also which we cannot even see commonly used indicators describing pm that are relevant to health refer to the mass concentration of particles with a diameter of less than 10 micron and of particles with a diameter of less than 2.5 micron that means the common concerning particles for our environment are pm 10 and pm 2.5 generally respirable suspended particulate matter or rspm are pm 1 which affect alveoli alveoli what is alveoli alveoli are the air sacs which are present in the lungs which take up the oxygen and enter allow it to enter into the blood stream and they also take up the carbon dioxide from the blood stream when we throw it out by the breathing so these are alveoli very small air pockets pm 2.5 affects the trachea that means the respiratory tract pm 10 affects the nasal part those working in dusty conditions are at very high risk example the miners many of them may be carcinogenic that means they may cause cancer they can become lodged in the lungs leading to bronchitis or the inflammation of the lungs asthma etc there is a disease which is called as pneumoconiosis this is a disease caused by the inhalation of dust particles which can damage the lungs a disease caused by the inhalation of the dust particles which can damage the lungs examples of pm are soil and dust particles soot soot that is black powder after burning of organic matter lead asbestos sea salt smoke drops of liquid such as sulfuric acid etc so so many are the examples of particulate matters next is the nitrogen oxide nitrogen oxides are produced from burning of fossil fuels contributes to acid rain and smog chief source is automobile exhaust causes difficulty in breathing as it is highly corrosive to lung tissue okay because this is very very corrosive to our lungs it forms a nitric acid also it can corrode the lungs next is sulfur oxide produced by burning of sulfur containing fossil fuels such as coal and oils when we burn the oil in our homes also kerosene oil and all so this generates sulfur oxide major source is the coal burning power plant like ntpc burns coal and generates the power contributes to acid rain also originated from refineries and chemical plants causes difficulty in breathing and causes various pulmonary disorders pulmonary means lung related disorders such as bronchitis as it is highly corrosive to lung tissue why because just like uh, nitrogen oxide by reaction with water produces hno3 nitric acid similarly sulfur oxide by reacting with water produces sulfuric acid acids are corrosive in nature next carbon oxide carbon oxides may in this carbon monoxide is there carbon co and carbon dioxide is there that is co2 these two are the pollutants they are produced by burning of organic matter such as coal wood trash petrol wherever you will have this organic matter burning of that organic matter will release the carbon oxides okay 
चीप सोर्स इज ऑटोमोबाइल एग्जॉस्ट बिकॉज पेट्रोल इज मेड अप ऑफ कार्बन सो ऑटोमोबाइल एग्जॉस्ट पेट्रोल डीजल दे विल कंज्यूम दे विल कम ड्यू टू कम्बशन आई सी इंजिन आर देयर सो दे विल जनरेट कार्बन ऑक्साइड्स इनकम्प्लीट कम्बशन कैन लीड टू रिलीज ऑफ कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड इज कलरलेस ओडरलेस एंड टॉक्सिक गैस एंड कंबाइंस केमिकली विथ हीमोग्लोबिन when carbon monoxide is, is inhaled inside it combines with hemoglobin to form this compound which is called as carboxy hemoglobin so when hemoglobin has the job to carry oxygen to different parts of the body but if hemoglobin has reacted with uh, carbon monoxide and has formed carboxy hemoglobin now it will reduce the oxygen carrying capacity of our blood next is hydrocarbons hydrocarbons are diverse group of organic compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen hydrocarbon means only carbon and hydrogen example methane ethane methine ethene methine ethine not not methine methane then ethane ethene ethine propane propyne something like that it goes on butane hexane nonane decane it goes on and on they contribute to smog in the atmosphere what is a smog we'll see now then we have volatile organic compounds voc volatile organic compounds are emitted as gases from various solids and liquids so many solids and liquids are there and these vocs are emitted as gases from various solids and liquids they are a sub group of hydrocarbons with high vapor pressure and low solubility in water they can be aliphatic that means long compounds chained compounds aromatic that means they have the rings in them or maybe polycyclic that means multiple rings in them so they are a sub group of hydrocarbons where are they produced vocs are produced during paint manufacture uh, you might have seen that wherever some paint has happened in that particular room there is some paint smell for a few days that is voc pharmaceutical companies refrigerants chlorination of water you remember volatile organic carbon or chloro organics chloro organics is nothing but that volatile organic carbon only is just another name to chloro organics so chloro organics are a type of volatile organic carbon because they converted to gases remember chlorination of water they are also the component of paint thinners dry cleaning chemicals car and room fresheners cosmetic products etc so these are also present in them vocs may have carcinogenic effect also eye irritation respiratory problems these are the common problems related to the volatile organic carbons that means it is in general or those organic compounds which convert to vapor state they have a distinct smell also all of them are commonly referred as volatile organic compounds okay next is ozone ozone is present in troposphere it is present in stratosphere is stratospheric ozone is actually required but tropospheric ozone is not required so this tropospheric ozone is a man made pollutant in the lower atmosphere in troposphere it's a secondary air pollutant why because it is not produced directly it is produced indirectly when two or more primary pollutants combine together it is a component of photochemical smog smog means smoke and fog and when it is that smoke and fog like conditions are happening in the presence of sunlight we call it as photochemical smog so i'll discuss it further stratospheric ozone if the ozone is in stratosphere it is actually required it is an essential component that screens out or removes the uv radiation in the upper atmosphere it's a man made pollutant man like man made pollutants like uh, chlorofluorocarbons can destroy it montreal protocol banned their usage so chlorofluorocarbons like these or uh, some other compounds so those compounds were banned because they were destroying the ozone layer and montreal protocol was the one a convention which uh, uh, insisted all the countries to stop or ban the usage of these kind of compounds then we have pan pan is peroxyacetyl nitrate its formula is c2h3no5 that is the formula of pan it is a secondary air pollutant present in the photochemical smog again photochemical smog it is a lacrimatory substance that is it irritates eyes and the lungs it's a lacrimatory substance ozone and pan both are formed in the smog conditions so both ozone this one previous one and this uh, pan both are formed in the smog condition 
नेक्स्ट इज फॉर्मेल डिहाइट इट्स फॉर्मूला इज सी एच टू ओ इट इज अ कॉमन इंडोर एयर पोल्यूटेंट इट्स अ वेरी कॉमन इंडोर एयर पोल्यूटेंट इट इज ऑल्सो कंपोनेंट ऑफ द फोटोकेमिकल स्मॉग इट्स ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट देयर इट इज अ गैस दैट कैन इरिटेट अ पर्सन आईज नोज थ्रोट एंड लंग्स और ट्रिगर एंड आस्थमा अटैक इवन एट लो कंसेंट्रेशन सो वेयर इट इज प्रेजेंट it is classified as both primary as well as secondary pollutant because it can be produced directly also or indirectly also sources include burning natural gas kerosene wood oil or cigarettes in the homes these generate the uh, formaldehyde compound automobile exhaust is a common outdoor source an outdoor common source is automobile exhaust so these are the various uh, types of uh, our pollutants and their effects in detail okay right please remember all this theory